It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Jane Pauley. Who is Ken Jennings? Is a question with several answers, among them winningest game show contestant ever, and more recently, newly named permanent host of the beloved quiz show Jeopardy. Luke Burbank catches up with Ken Jennings. The category is Famous Jennings. After being expelled from Jamaica in 1716, this privateer became the unofficial governor of the Pirate Republic of Nassau. Oh, I don't know this. It's one of my pirate forefathers named Jennings. Ken Jennings might not know his trivia quite like he used to. This is the ravages of time we're witnessing. Yeah. This is like watching me turn to dust and blow away <laughs> in a chill wind. <laughs> Ken Jennings! Yeah, so. You are the champion! Yeah. The greatest of all time. But that's okay if he's a little rusty, because these days Jennings gets to see all the answers long before he heads out on stage as the now host of his favorite TV show ever. It's kind of the plot of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, I guess. A retiring leader of a franchise takes, you know, five little boys and girls to see which one of them really loves his chocolate the most. And I was the one that didn't get sucked up the pipe or whatever. Alex Is Wonka, longtime and legendary host Alex Trebek, who guided the show for decades. Jeopardy! A show that turns 60 this year. As a young Mormon kid living in Korea, Jennings says watching Armed Forces television was his favorite way to pass the time. And his favorite thing to watch? Game shows, of course. I think it was actually the gameplay itself. It was a version of the world with well-defined rules, where you could watch a few of them and understand the format. And as a kid, dealing with a confusing world, on game shows, game shows are different. You know, questions get answered almost immediately. You know, for a right answer, there's a nice little ping. For a wrong answer, there's an immediate buzz. It's not like life, which is messy. Game shows are, are neat and fun and easy. In college, instead of following his dreams of writing, he opted to become what he calls a bad computer programmer, figuring it was the safe choice. He married his sweetheart, Mindy, started a family, and thought that's how his life would go. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Trebek, and welcome to the Jeopardy! Contestant Exam. When, on a whim, he took the Jeopardy! Contestant Exam. When I got the call a year later saying, hey, we'd like to have you on in three weeks, I freaked out. I started watching the show very intensely, standing up behind my lazy boy at home pretending it was a podium, mashing my thumb up and down on a like a Fisher-Price plastic toy I'd stolen from our 18-month-old, um, just pretending it was a buzzer. My wife would keep score and tell me how I was doing. It was kind of a rocky training montage. A software engineer from Salt Lake City, Utah, Ken Jennings. To this day, Jennings says nothing compares to the nerves he felt under the lights and on camera that first time he stepped on stage as a contestant. But then, something amazing happened. In that first game, I found that like years of listening to the clipped rhythms of Alex Trebek really did help. Like watching the show, standing up with my fake buzzer helped. I, I kind of had the timing right away. Julia. What is New Zealand? Good. You In that first game, the score was close, and it all came down to final Jeopardy. And I remember Alex accepting my response. It was about the Sydney Olympics, who is Marion Jones. And I had just written down who is Jones. And Alex pauses for a second like, ooh. Is that enough? Is he just guessing a last name? And so Alex looks to the judges and he gets the high sign and he says, that's correct. And I realize I'm going to be a Jeopardy champion for the rest of my life. And it was just an immediate rush of euphoria that's hard to explain. Like, as good as the birth of my kids. I, I can say that now that they're, you know, teens and out of the house. It, it was just an amazing moment. Alex would just wait, and if they didn't know it, he would be like, nope. Boop, 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 boop. Oh. That microsecond decision because led to 74 straight victories, two and a half million dollars, game show immortality, and eventually, and improbably, the job of Jeopardy host. So, I am standing at the, you might even say, an altar of sorts that many of us trivia nerds have thought about a lot. This is the, the light pen, the telestrator, where you can write yeah. down your, your name and your final Jeopardy response. Why does it seem that so many highly intelligent people have such questionable handwriting 
on this show. Is it something to do with the device? The pen got better. This is much nicer than the version I was trying to ride with, which I think had a cord back in okay. 2004. It's funny, I'm getting flashbacks just by being here. It's almost like there are two Jeopardy sets for me. You know, yeah. there, there was this one uh -huh. back here, and there's like just a chasm between you and Alex. Jennings will admit to one possible advantage he might have in the job, his empathy for players. Because he's been there himself. Still, Alex Trebek looms large. If I was ever at sea, I would just think, what would Alex do here? And often, it was to do less. He had this amazing minimalist kind of light touch where he never wanted the focus to be on himself, which is such an unusual, beautiful thing in show business. I kind of feel like even now, I, I want to be Alex Trebek when I grow up because nobody's ever going to do that job as well as he did it. Which brings us back to our game and a mistake I made earlier, which the judges caught. At the top of our story, I said they give Jennings the answers before the game, but of course, that's incorrect. They give him the questions. So where exactly did that come from? Well, from Jeopardy! creator Merv Griffin's then-wife, Julianne, the story goes. Yeah, so Merv and Julianne are on a plane coming back from vacation, and he's trying to come up with game show ideas. And she says, well, just do one of those, like, uh, quiz shows like they used to have. And he said, honey, we can't do those anymore. Those were all crooked. They were, they were giving the players the answers. Oh. And she thinks about it. And she says, well, that's what you should do. You should just give them the answer. <laughs> and they'll come up with the question. And he says, what do you mean? And she says, you know, 5,280 feet. And he says, what is a mile? And that's the birth of Jeopardy right there. The birth of a TV quiz show. But more importantly, says Jennings, the birth of something that in a small way has helped hold us Americans together, at least for 30 minutes a night. And there's nothing trivial about that. The great and the odd thing about Jeopardy is it's kind of universally popular. Old people like Jeopardy, young people like Jeopardy, red states, blue states. It's bizarrely universal. America still agrees that there's like a half hour every day where facts do matter. And we are allowed to adjudicate things as right or wrong, actually based on science and history. And I do think that's an important bulwark. See you tomorrow. <laughs> we love you. We'll see you here on The Family Too. Show until next time. This is Peter Tomorrow, and on behalf of the Focati Rug, saying thanks for pressing your luck. Bye-bye. Anyway, we have just 10 seconds to say goodbye. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. So long. Bye-bye. Yeah. We got we, five seconds. Oh, no. We have three. Two, one. Bye. Five.